Could you tell us more about that? Really excited about it. Uh, the title is Ed Gordon. Um, I, they came up with that. I didn't. Uh, but what it is is a, a 60 Minutes um, news magazine, 60 Minutes being an hour long. Mm -hmm. But it will follow in the format of 60 Minutes, the mm -hmm. venerable television show, and that will do segments, uh, usually three or four an hour. Mm -hmm. And so we're really excited about that opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Our debut show will have an interview with um, five mothers of the movement, mm -hmm. from Trayvon Martin's mother to Michael Brown's mother, Jordan Davis's mother. We gathered five of them in a room, and it's, it really is uh, extraordinary to sit down with them. They were very, very open. At times, I'll be honest, it's very hard to watch mm -hmm. um, the emotion to see mothers who've lost their children. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also uplifting to see what they've done out of tragedy. Mm -hmm. And so I was very honored that they decided to really sit down with me and open up in a way that I don't think we'll, um, we will have seen wow, okay. to that point. Um, second story is on the movie uh, The Birth of a Nation. Mm -hmm. A lot of buzz going mm -hmm. on about mm -hmm. that. Um, a lot of people anticipating what this movie can be, whether mm -hmm. it can be an agent of change, whether it's going to be more than just a movie. Mm -hmm. We sat down with the entire cast. We put Nate Parker together with a group of students uh, from across the country mm -hmm. and sat down. And I've also been traveling with him, uh, making some of the stops as he's been going around touting the movie. And um, we also have what we're calling Five Minutes With. And every mm -hmm. show we're going to have this. And that's where I spend five minutes with somebody mm -hmm. and uh, sit and just have a quick conversation with them. And uh, very pleased to say we have Maxwell as oh. our first one. Yeah, I assumed that <laughs> to be the case. Uh, Maxwell and I have really known each other since uh, he um, debuted mm -hmm. 20 years ago, as hard as, as uh, that is to believe, 20 years for him. Uh, but we had a great conversation. He had just finished a sound check, and we talk about his career, mm -hmm. uh, how his life has changed, and how activism really is becoming an important part of, uh, of his life. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how he creates music. So it was uh, fun and exciting, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, probably do a little commentary at the end of the show, but it's, uh, it's really uh, a great opportunity for me, something mm -hmm. I've wanted to do for a long time, this kind of format. So, Well, I'm excited, and I know a lot of journalists look up to you. I know I definitely looked up to you. Um, it's great to have this type of show, like currently, because there's nothing that's really like that that's out there um did you have a favorite segment or interview so far from the show or you love all of them differently they're different mm -hmm. um I, I i'd have to say you know it's, there's nothing like sitting and trying to stay emotionless and and objective in getting through an interview as we did with the mothers mm -hmm. um so clearly that in in one aspect was mm -hmm. extraordinary for us mm -hmm. um to sit with nate and you know, look at a movie that so many people are talking about before it's even been released mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is extraordinary, particularly around the times that we sit. Yeah. If you think about the rebellion that the movie is around and you look at the Black Lives Matter movement, their mm -hmm. correlations. Mm -hmm. So of course we're excited about those kinds of things um, that'll be brought out in this piece. And of course Maxwell is one of those names. I mean, just look at your reaction mm -hmm. when I said his name, but he's one of those names that I think whether you're my age or whether you're 20-something. Um, he, he's one of those artists that speaks to all of us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he doesn't do a lot of interviews. He doesn't mm -hmm. sit down and really no, do. Um, and so it was, uh, it was fun for us. We had been texting uh, back and forth for about a month. And, and in fact, we were just texting the other day. Uh, he's in Korea. So it's, um, it's a fun opportunity for me to bring another side of people to, mm -hmm. uh, to the audience. That's amazing. 
Now, you kind of touched on this. Um, a question that we had is, um, what do you think about the current state of affairs right now in terms of our political state, our social state, and where we are right now? Well, I think that um, there's a saying that says, you know, people get the leadership they deserve. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us to kind of look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are satisfied with either choice, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Clinton has uh, some baggage that she's brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think elicits the zeal that we've seen, certainly from our community with President mm -hmm. Obama, but there isn't that same love even for Mrs. Clinton that there was for her husband. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that unfairly, um, you know, she has been maybe looked at as, as you know, Trump calls her crooked, but um, I'm not sure that if you look in the closet of most politicians, you wouldn't be able to find certain things. But certainly the zeal that I think people would want to see in a candidate is not quite there for her yet. Um, and clearly, Mr. Trump is starting to implode. Um, no matter what Republican leadership says um, outwardly, there's real concern. Mm -hmm. uh, as to whether or not he's too much of a loose cannon, mm -hmm. whether or not they are going to have to concede the White House prior to the election and mm -hmm. try to save um, the majority in the houses. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that it's time for all of us to really take a step back mm -hmm. and look at uh, who we want to lead our country, mm -hmm. what our expectations are, mm -hmm. um, what's our role in all of this. And so I think that I hope that this will be an opportunity for us to really um, take a backward step and look at the big picture mm -hmm. and determine what we want, not for the next four years, but in the next coming years, mm -hmm. in the next decades uh, for our children. Um, if we stay where we are, I think there's going to be a hell to pay at the end of the day. Do you think it's been more difficult for Hillary Clinton because she is a woman or just based on just some other factors? I think both. Mm -hmm. I think there's no question that there is still a double, double standard. Mm -hmm. We saw it with President Obama for eight years. There were certain things mm -hmm. that were expected or not expected of him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would contend that a lot of that had to do with his color. There was a certain disrespect. Mm -hmm. that was given not just to him but to the office mm -hmm. you know, there are always times where you heard people say well I respect the office of the presidency mm -hmm. I think there were times that that simply wasn't the case and while I don't know a person's heart or mind mm -hmm. I would lay wager that some of that had to do with the color of his skin and we'd be naive to assume that a woman is not even in today's world mm -hmm. uh, seen differently and maybe not given the same kind of respect um, that others are given. So I think that she still has a steeper climb than if she were a man. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think, as it, uh, is the case with uh, President Obama, that if in fact she wins and the fact that she's won this nomination makes it a lot easier for, for young women who come behind her mm -hmm. to know that you can do this. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, and you sat down with the mothers of the movement, and I'm originally, um, I used to live in St. Louis myself where, you know, the Mike Brown situation mm -hmm. took off. Um, when you were in conversation with the mothers, um, did you ask them about their thoughts, you know, with the fact that after all these police brutality killings, there's absolutely no conviction up to now? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked about the idea that, and uh, Sabrina Fulton talked about, that there has to be a mindset change among mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. I was in the airport the other day um, waiting on a flight, and this was right after the uh, Milwaukee shooting. Mm -hmm. And there was a press conference going on, the monitor at the gate where I was sitting, uh, CNN was on. And I stopped and started people watching, and it was interesting because there were a handful of African-American uh, passengers, and a, 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 maybe half of them were paying attention to the monitor. Mm -hmm. And a great majority of the whites and other ethnicities who sat at the gate barely looked up at all. And this was with video of police cars on fire and all of the um, aftermath of the, the shooting. And I, I sat and I thought to myself, wow, this is interesting because, and again, I can't read the minds of people, and I'm not talking about 
those mothers or fathers who were sitting there and their kids were running around the terminal and they weren't paying attention to anything other than their, their kids. I'm talking about people who were really idly sitting. I think that that was a metaphor for how our country is. I think there's a lot of white America that doesn't see this as their problem. They see it as a black problem, and that's a problem in your neighborhood, not in ours. Um, I think there are a lot of black people who feel the pain, but if it's not my child and not happening in my neighborhood, and not, we don't really get up in arms enough to demand that this thing stop. Mm-hmm. If I had told people five years ago that we would see the succession of shootings that we've seen, people would say, oh, no, 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 that won't happen. We're going to stop all that. Mm-hmm. And it seems like with every name and every occurrence, and we just kind of put our heads down and shake our heads and say oh my god but don't do anything Mm -hmm. at some level when are we going to say you know what as a collective Mm -hmm. not just black people but good thinking people have to stand up and say no you know I I contend that maybe black folk ought to take a day off work all of us Mm -hmm. the NFL the NBA newscasters you know just don't go to work and if you have to go to work we got you put a fund in We'll pay for that day of work for folk who really, really have to have that money. Something has to be done. We cannot continue to see our kids shot. And I do not believe any other ethnicity in this country would live through this without making it stop. Mm -hmm. And so we have to. And when I sat with those mothers, and I think our viewers will see that, you see the aftermath of people who had to live through this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I talk about how Sabrina Fulton and I have been together in a number, uh, at a number of events. She is a celebrity now. People run over to her for selfies and want her autograph and want to take pictures, but I, I quickly remind them, remember why she's a celebrity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she talked about how painful, they all, they all talk about how painful it is can, for them on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. And though, even though they're getting better in one sense, that pain never goes away. And every day they wake up without their child. And so I think you'll be able to see in this segment the raw emotion Mm -hmm. that has moved them to become advocates. Mm -hmm. But also you see the raw emotion of a mother who has lost her child violently. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, we're better off today in terms of race than we were? Absolutely. You don't even have to finish that. Absolutely. (laughs) And anyone who says we're not is foolish. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm, I'm sitting getting ready to host a television show with my name on it Mm -hmm. that will go on nationally. In 1950, that would not have happened. In 1940, Mm -hmm. that wouldn't have happened. In 1970, conceivably, that wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. In 1980, that might not have happened. Are we better? Yes. Are we where we should be? Absolutely not. Is there some regression? Probably. Uh, But we're better than we were post-civil rights era. the generation that comes after us, for the most part, they're not as hung up with race as we are. But they also see now, particularly, oh, yeah. that there is a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are some other things that we can expect from the show? And could you tell us um, when the show comes on and when everybody needs to tune in? It debuts uh, September 13th. Mm-hmm. Jim, do you know the time? I don't know. Okay. 10 Mm p.m., September 13th. Um, You know what we want the show to be? We want the show to be the show that you start watching and you call your friends to say, turn this on. Mm -hmm. You have to see this. We want the show to be when you hear the lineup. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted this first show to be. I wanted people to say, oh, wow, the Mothers of Movement, Mike Brown's mom, Trayvon Martin's mother, really? Wow, Jordan Davis is my, oh, gosh, I, I got to see that. Oh, what? Birth of a Nation. Oh, man, Maxwell, what? I got to see that. Mm-hmm. That's what we wanted this to be. And I believe mm-hmm. when I tell people the lineup, they go, oh, wow. Yeah. So that's what we want this show Because it hasn't be. been done. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been done. And I just think that historically, knock on wood, I've been very blessed in my career to get people to sit with me. Mm-hmm. and to sit with me and maybe talk about some things that they haven't typically talked about, or at least in a different way. And so I just hope my history of being able to do that mm-hmm. continues. Because everyone was so excited and a little bit jealous that I got to sit down with you today. <laughs> do you have any advice for all the journalists out there in terms of just you know sticking to your craft and just what it takes to be 
a respected and good journalist. Well, I think what you said is, is the key craft. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what I do think has changed in our industry over the last few years, and this is not me, you know, me being, oh, you're old school, it's a new day. I get that it's a new day. Mm -hmm. I get that this is not the same industry that I entered. It is not. It's completely different. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to be journalists if you, if you want to be a journalist. Um, you can be a blogger and not a journalist and have your opinion and do whatever you want on your blog. Mm -hmm. But if you tout yourself a journalist, there is a, a line you should walk. You know, uh, Gwen Eiffel said, and I agree with her 100%, you know, you need to remain a journalist. So if, if, if Hillary Clinton comes to um, NABJ, you can't go hog wild and cover her in a way just because she came to visit mm -hmm. and that you wouldn't normally. You know, there is a sense of learning your craft, learn, learn to write, learn to interview, learn to listen. Um, and again, there are those differentiations. Mm -hmm. There's a journalist and there's a blogger, there's a social media expert. Th those are different things. But if you want to be a journalist, you really ought to learn your craft. And that's what I try to tell people all the time. Learn your craft. Awesome. Thank you so much oh, for your time. You, My pleasure. Thank you.